Stop the presses! Major breaking news! Apple just surprised us with the new iPad Mini and, uh... I know what you're thinking. It looks the same, and it's just another lazy update from Apple. Well, while that was my first reaction to the iPad Mini announcement, the more I looked at it, the more I read through the specs, the more I realized there's actually a lot to unpack here, and there's a lot of features this iPad Mini gains because of its new chip that you might not have thought about, and some surprise upgrades that weren't in the rumor mill, and Apple fixed one of my biggest complaints with the last iPad Mini model that makes me think that this is a much better value than before. Now, before we get into the video, I just want to say that I publicly stated that I wanted to get to 400,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and I kind of said, like, it was probably impossible because who's going to subscribe that much to me in such a short amount of time? But yeah, we kind of got a lot of love the last time I mentioned it, and now we're only 50,000 subscribers away, so maybe we could actually uh, pull this thing, you know, out of our uh, behinds and, and get to that number. So there's no sponsor for this video, but if you want to show your thanks, all you have to do is subscribe and I guess like the video and, and throw a comment down there as well to help the algorithm, whatever. People are still saying that, right? Who cares? Who cares about my needs? Like, I'm just some stupid YouTuber. Who, who cares about me? Maybe you, but I, I, that's a thank you because you probably shouldn't care about me, but let's not waste any time. Let's get into the video and talk about what Apple announced here. Because even though we were expecting a new iPad mini to be announced this month, no one thought that it would be announced via a press release today. Apple just came out of the blue and said, hey, there's a new iPad mini and you can actually just go buy it right now. And I guess it makes sense if Apple is still doing an October Mac event to just announce this now because fitting that iPad mini in, into that event would have seemed a little weird and, uh, and not really fit the theme of that event if it's just based entirely on new Macs. So, What's new with this iPad mini? Well, the headline feature is obviously that it gets a new A17 Pro chip, which is going to be a two chip generation jump from the last iPad mini, which came with the A15 chip. And it's a bigger deal than you think. Obviously the hallmark advertised feature is right there front and center. This A17 Pro chip is going to support Apple intelligence. And that is how this iPad mini is being heavily advertised on Apple's press release and on their website. So yes, all of the Apple intelligence features that are coming out this month are going to be supported on this new iPad mini, and they are not going to be supported on the last iPad mini because it came with that older A15 chip. And you need an A17 Pro chip or newer for these features. So right off the bat, this iPad mini gains a lot of software exclusive features like a smarter Siri, smarter notifications, smart summaries, AI writing tools, Genmoji, image playgrounds, and more and more AI features as Apple continues to roll them out over the next year. Besides these AI features, the A17 Pro chip is also much stronger than the A15 chip. It has stronger CPU performance, also a three nanometer chip, which should mean increased efficiency on the iPad mini. And because the physical dimensions of the iPad mini are exactly the same as the last model, down to the weight, that means the battery size is also the same, which could mean even though it's not advertised as having better battery life, because the chip's more efficient, the battery life should be better on this version of the mini. The A17 Pro chip also enables what I think is a very cool feature on these new iPad minis, the ability to play those higher end AAA level games like Resident Evil 4 Remake or Death Stranding on this device, which is really good for that iPad mini form factor. And it could make it like a Nintendo Switch kind of gaming experience, provided you have the right controller setup. And I'm really interested to try that out on this new mini when I pick it up. But there's another reason this A17 Pro chip makes this a much better upgrade. And it's something you probably didn't think about because Apple does not advertise it on their website. And that is the memory because we know the iPhone 15 Pro was the only device that came with this chip and it had eight gigabytes of memory. And the last iPad mini only came with four gigabytes of memory. So that's double the memory of the last mini model. And that is going to make a huge difference in performance, especially in intensive apps like photo editors, video editors, or just even the general responsiveness or how many layers you can have open in things like a drawing application. It also means that apps are going to stay open longer in the background and refresh less often, which is going to make for a much better multitasking experience. And because of the A17 chip and this memory increase all at once, it's going to make the iPad mini feel like a bigger jump in performance than you would expect. Now, yes, in terms of the design, the iPad mini, as I mentioned before, right, it's exactly the same. It still has the same thickness, the same weight, the same bezels, the same 8.3 inch display, the same touch ID power button, and even the same display specs as the old iPad mini. The only real new design change here is that the iPad mini seventh generation comes with 
one new color. It comes in a new blue color that replaces the previous pink color option. With that being said, there are some internal changes and additions to the iPad mini. One of those hidden upgrades is that the USB-C port is now faster, running at double the speed of the old mini at 10 gigabits per second. The iPad mini also gets support for better networking with Wi-Fi 6E and improved Bluetooth with Bluetooth 5.3. And there's also a slight design change on the cellular version of the mini because it removes the SIM card tray slot. And now all cellular iPads will use eSIM instead, just like they do on the iPhones. Furthermore, the camera specs have been upgraded thanks to the new A17 Pro chip, so the Mini can now shoot in Smart HDR4, which is better than Smart HDR3, right? It's, it's one number higher, it's, it's gotta be better. By far the biggest change and upgrade though is that the seventh generation Mini also gets support for the Apple Pencil Pro. This brings along some upgraded features like the ability to use the Apple Pencil Hover feature, a taptic engine that lets users squeeze the Apple Pencil to bring up brush tools, and rotating the Apple Pencil to change the width and orientation of the pen and brush tools. And those are all great upgrades, and as I look through that list, even though there's no new major design upgrades and sadly no new display technology like an OLED display, I have to admit, it's a pretty substantial list of upgrades here for the new iPad mini, even though a lot of these features debuted on older products, and it does kind of feel like the mini upgrade is just a bit of playing catch up, but kind of, you know, that's, that's kind of what this mini needed. However, there is one thing I left out that makes this upgrade a much better value than the older models, and that is the storage and pricing options, which used to be my biggest complaint with the old iPad mini, because that sixth generation mini only came with 64 gigabytes of storage at $500. And I don't need to tell you that that starting storage for that price point was insanely low. And the only way to upgrade the storage was to spend an additional $150 to upgrade to their next and only other storage tier option at 256 gigabytes, which is four times more storage than the base model. So it put the mini in an awkward spot. It was kind of like the Goldilocks thing, right? This, this porridge sucks. This other big porridge sucks too. I don't know if that's the correct analogy, but we're saying it right here. Thankfully, Apple has changed that. The base iPad mini now comes with 128 gigabytes of storage, a perfect storage option for a device like this, where you don't expect it to be your main computer. On top of that, Apple dropped the price of the 256 gigabyte upgrade to now $599. So it's a $100 bump instead of a $150 bump. And they even added a third storage tier option for users that want to go even higher with storage at 512 gigabytes for $799. Now that's exactly like the Goldilocks analogy. Now there's three choices, right? This one and, and this one and, and that one, and one of them's just right by the 128 gigabyte model. So overall, you're getting a new iPad mini that, yeah, doesn't have an exciting new design, but it does come with upgrades that were much needed, including a faster chip, Apple intelligence support, more memory, better connectivity, Apple Pencil Pro support, and double the base storage. And that makes this iPad mini a pretty decent upgrade which may not be the take you were expecting me to say when so many other people are probably bashing this product right now. Yeah, if you have the last iPad mini version, you probably don't need to upgrade, but if you were on the fence about buying an iPad mini, this looks like a good model that should last for a while with upgrades thanks to that A17 Pro chip. And while I would usually compare this iPad to other models and give you some buying recommendations, I think that the mini is in a very unique position. It's a tablet only. It's not like the other iPads that are trying to replace your laptop or be a hybrid-like device. And that makes the mini really satisfying and kind of like a pure experience. So if you think you would like a smaller iPad mini, you only want a tablet experience, that's the one to go for. And you can actually pre-order this device right now and it delivers on October 23rd. And if you are planning on ordering one, you can support the channel even further by clicking the link in the description and using one of my affiliate links as a thank you for this amazing video. But let me know, what do you think of the new iPad mini in the comments below? Is it enough of an upgrade or were you waiting for something a little more substantial? Also, I really hope this video helped you out in deciding if you want the iPad mini. If it did, please leave me a like. Subscribe to the channel for that 400,000 by the end of the year. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for dealing with all those Goldilocks analogies and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.